Light after the darkest hour. This is where Moncton's nightmare ended last night. Soon after dawn gently broke, a community under siege was finally free. I actually said to him, this is probably the happiest day of my life. Really? Yeah. Why is that? Because you're just living in terror. I'm on the fence about this. I kind of wish and really hoped at the time they were going to put a bullet in him, to be honest. On the other hand, I would actually almost like to know what he was thinking. It was just after midnight when police caught the suspected gunman who had terrorized this small maritime city. Weapons were seized at the scene, but in the end, Justin Bork was unarmed and did not resist arrest. The arrest is just a few homes away. Yeah, yeah, I'm, in, I'm up there. Right? Linda Peacock so, heard I mean, the uh, sudden startling I mean, sounds of his capture. Right? What were they screaming? They were saying, come out, come out, come out. He's here, he's here, they were saying, come out, come out. Um, so uh, I got my binoculars and I started looking and you could see some of it. Eh? The massive manhunt ended in a wooded area near this quiet residential street. Police who had been on high alert for nearly 30 hours were operating on a tip from a resident and used a heat detector to hunt for Bork in the dark. Today, in an exclusive television interview, RCMP Commissioner Bob Paulson described how police closed in. We got a sighting. Uh, we deployed our teams from a staged area and we were able to contain a, a, a sizable enough area that we could begin to shrink it. And as we shrunk that uh, containment area, of course, he, and we were communicating with him all the time, um, you know, he understood that the forces were just insurmountable and he gave himself up. That back and forth between the officers and Bork lasted only a few minutes before Bork said, I'm done. The suspect of the deadly shootings appeared in court today, charged with three counts of first-degree murder and two counts of attempted murder in connection with two other officers wounded that night. Police say porch lights left on by residents helped guide them on a dark, rainy night. This morning in this neighborhood, the only visible remnant of the fatal shootings, a vehicle covered in tarp, still under police watch. Elsewhere, the barricades, the police presence is gone. Life is moving again. And everywhere, signs of gratitude and support. The ordeal is over and there is relief, but a realization too, a sense of security may take a lot longer to get back. After all, there hasn't been a murder reported here in Moncton in the last few years until now, of course, and it's why, Wendy, people here will take, it will take people here a long time to feel safe again. Thanks so much, Johanna.